thousand dollars. You think that would get some interest? Come on, come on. Do you think that would get some interest? I mean, let's get excited about wrestling. And we can't be afraid to do more. We have to want to do more. You have to get so excited about life that everything you think is, how, how can I be better than what I'm doing today? I got a motto that says you got to be the best every second of every minute, of every hour, of every day. And you know, it just takes a little attitude. It just takes believing you can do it. And I tell my kids, who are now 50 and 48, no matter what you're doing, I've been telling this a long time, I tell my wrestlers, I say, look, you're taking the trash out today, take the trash out better than anybody ever took the trash out. Everything you do, think about how can I be the best at it? And it's, it doesn't take a lot of energy. In fact, the day ends and you're tired and you sleep well and you get up the next day and you want to do it again. It's easier to get out of bed and say, I'm going to be the best I can be than it is to get out of bed and say, man, I wish I didn't have to get up. How many people start their day with, I wish I didn't have to get up? It's like dragging up the bed along with you all day. Yep, yeah, got to go to work. Wish I didn't have to work. I get up in the morning and I go, I feel great. Man, this is fabulous. And I'm almost 70. And I believe that if I can believe something, if I can conceive something, I can achieve it. And Frank Lapoli called me one day and he said, let's do some rallies. And I said, okay, Titan Mercury Wrestling Club's in. Six days later, we had a bunch of people in a room. Like he said, four-time state champions. One of them was a father, David Martin, his son, Michael Martin. You know, pretty amazing when you look at what wrestling has done in the world of wrestling. And now we're gonna go beyond the world of wrestling and we're gonna challenge the world of people. And I created a shirt called Human Doing. So I'm no longer a human being, I am a human doing. And I didn't bring any of those shirts, and I wish I had. The next time I will. So before I introduce a good friend of mine, somebody I've known, I wanna tell you, how I got to Maryland. I wrestled in Virginia. Did, did you throw any of my credits out? <laughs> I, don't, I don't like to blow my horn, but about 90% of the time. <laughs> Cornell Bass is here. Now I met Cornell Bass in 1991. I met Ron Ryder in 1991. I met Haswell Franklin in 1991 because I had a dream down in Virginia and said I wanted to make a movie, a major motion picture. Always wanted to be a movie star. Figured the best way to do it was produce a movie and make myself the star. It made, it made perfect sense to me. So I went about that process and it took me about 18 years. And part of that time, Along the way, I was selling t-shirts. They were one more shot t-shirts, had a picture of me on them. Can you imagine that? <laughs> and a picture of John Smith. And he was only a one-time Olympic champion at the time, 1988. He won the Olympics. I didn't know he was going to win it again in 92. But he was the guy I wanted in the movie because that was the guy in this movie I wanted to beat. It was the only way I could get my Olympic gold was to make a movie. And then John Smith made me sign a contract that I couldn't win. <laughs> it was that depressing. But along the way, I came to Maryland with some t-shirts. And I met a guy named Ron Ryder, who's from Maryland. He was a state chairman uh, for a lot of years. And Haswell took over that position. And Maryland Wrestling owes these guys a lot. And Cornell Bass was at that meeting. And, and Ron Palanis was at that meeting. He always gets mad at me because I blow his last name. But uh, Those guys were there, and they said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to sell some T-shirts. Well, why do you want to sell T-shirts? Well, I'm making a movie. Well, Myron Roderick, if you remember him, he started the Hall of Fame, and he was a great wrestling coach at Oklahoma State, won seven team titles, won three himself, incredible coach. He came to me one weekend and he said, Wayne, you got to stop selling these t-shirts. You're not making a movie. Nobody can just make a movie. Now you're selling these t-shirts like you're making a movie, but you're not making a movie. And it's, it's almost like you're lying to people. I said, coach, I'm going to make this movie. Just hang with me. Well, a hundred thousand t-shirts later, 
I raised a million dollars selling t-shirts over about eight years. And I spent it along the way, because that's what I always did, was you got some, you spent. So I still didn't have the money to make the move. <laughs> but I had sold a lot of t-shirts, and I met these guys in Maryland, and I've been, I've been a fan of Maryland and Maryland wrestling now for 30 years. 91, maybe that's only 20 years, 2000, 91, 2001, 2000, so 20 plus years. And for you guys to have guys like Teague Moore at American University, Terry McCoy at the University of Maryland, I mean, unbelievable. What a, to watch this state grow and the things you're doing on a high school level and a kid's level, I don't even know you people, but I can tell you I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of what, what, how you feel about yourselves and how you feel about this sport. And I'm honored to stand up here in front of you. And I could talk for days, but I won't. <laughs> so I want to introduce that young man. Ron, come up here. Ron Ryder, who I met, and Ron has been my friend ever since. In fact, he, when we shot one more shot, out in L.A., Ron, Ron came to the set, and the first thing he wanted to do was be in the movie. So I said, okay, I need somebody I can pin in under 20 seconds. So you, you can have that part. He said, come on, can I last a little longer? He said, 20 seconds, let me go a minute. I said, all right, here's the deal. If you can go a minute, you can stay in the movie a minute. I think I pinned him in about 33 seconds. But dear friend, we, we spent a lot of time, won some uh, veteran national championships together, and he's the reason I met Haswell Franklin. And uh, just part of the reason we're here is, is to honor the guys of Maryland, and this is one such person. So uh, without any more Wayne Boyd, Ron Ryder. For those of you guys that uh, aren't familiar with making movies and stuff like that, Wayne is pretty accurate in what he says. But when he pinned me there, you guys, listen to me, girls. It's ketchup, okay? It's not real blood. It was it's just like some kind of script or something, you know? That's, forget it. But it was a great experience. He's always trying to the, make up that it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a hundred times. It's ketchup, it's not real blood. But actually, we were at Mount St. Joe the first day that you showed up as you were there. And I remember the exact words you said. I said, what do you think of this guy? What do you think? And Haz says to me, Ron, you don't know how to say no. You, you, you work with him, you know? <laughs> so I said, yes. I didn't know. So it's, it's, it's always been a pleasure, Wayne. It always will be a pleasure. And it's, it's a tempting. It's like, hold the mic up. It's, it's always a tempting, you know, little thing. The, the best day is when he comes, the best day is when he goes. <laughs> um, but it's Haswell that I have the honor to introduce here. It's Haswell. So I'm going to switch gears here. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, and I'm going to digress a little bit here, is I'm going to say what it says here. For a lifetime of service to wrestling, your innovative approach to leadership has been has enhanced the overall quality of wrestling in the state of Maryland. Let's just hold on to that thought for a second, okay? And don't fall for that. So, Haswell helped me with this. The first time we met, I think... I didn't have hair either. <laughs> I think... I think I started the wrestling program at Overly. It was uh, with uh, Chip... Uh, Pete's team over there, that junior league team, and you were working as the as the secretary in the Maryland Junior Wrestling League, right? Right. right? And that's the first time we met. I, I can tell you, Dave, it's uh, 70, um, 7, 78. I was coaching, Billy Bly was coaching, Tommy DiCarlo was coaching. We had a wonderful time in that in those years. I mean, it was great back then. But, um, uh, one time, we met, it was Desi started this, this, this he, Desi was taking the kids out to Iowa, now Fargo, and uh, we had one group of kids, we, the Chipperellis had just gone out there, they were successful, we had one group of kids go with one coach, one group of kids go with another coach, it was never organized. 
In the tournaments in Maryland, at the same time going on, there was the Federation and the AAU. They were fighting with each other. Kenny, I know you remember this. Uh, you know, to, um, to have two tournaments, they would fight to see who was better. They put the same event on the same day, right? So the two big events in wrestling, you'd say, well, what tournament you're going to? You know, two-thirds would go one place, one-third would go the other place. On the same day, they would fight with each other. So, myself, didn't even put myself first there, my wife, Haswell, Desi, Mr. Ciparelli, Jerry Ciparelli, he's no longer with us right now, somebody else, and I can't remember his name, we sat, we had the first meeting, remember that has down Jerry Ciparelli's basement? I got two pizzas, we lit up the fireplace, he, Chip said he never did that fireplace before in like 10 years, and, uh, and we said we're going to have an association. And all we were going to do, we had, a, we had a small list, you could you could count it on your finger. We were going to organize tournaments to make money, to organize somebody to send the kids to Iowa, the kids' nationals. That's all we were going to do. Okay? Now think about that. Where we started from, one meeting, four or five people, where we're at today. This, this huge undertaking is from this man right here. Okay? I was lucky enough to be the first state chairman. We work relentlessly. I want to show you a little example here. I don't know if I can do this or not. When we first made up these flyers, this is uh, 1988. It was our flyers. Remember how painlessly we tortured these documents. We traversed them. We scrutinized them. We uh, perused every concept of every document and everything that we did, not just our documents, but our process or everything. The, the way tournaments were. Tournaments, you would go to them, they were late. You'd sign in, you'd wrestle, they say we're started at 10. You didn't start till 12 or 1 o'clock back in those days. It, it was always the same way. When Haswell ran them, and he got th these things going on, especially when he got uh, Mike and um, Matt Malinowski, I wish they were here tonight, it started at 10, it was scheduled to start at 10. We started at 10.05. We're at 10. We're at 10.10. 10. You know? And, I mean, it was like clockwork. And working with Haz was something. So we had these things, flyers out, we put all these out here, we scrutinized every part of it. I wish I knew all the names that were in here. There's some names on here. Um, uh, Frank Spiegel, Tom LaMonica. Jim Douglas, Ron Otto, Ron Kalinas, Josh Henson. Josh Henson just had, just had a little boy. <laughs> How old is he for a little boy? Uh, how old am I? Okay. Um, it goes on and on. Desi McNellis, Rosenberg. Somewhere, Reg Wicks. Ernie Walters, Frank Spiegel. It goes on and on. All these, how many events did we put together? How many times did we have this solid? But the interesting thing, the other interesting thing was we'd have these meetings all the time. And every time, once in a while, somebody would come into the meeting and they, man, you could see them burning up. And they, we never saw them before. It was a father or somebody. And Haswell had the, the ranking systems. And in the early days, trust me, it was just Haswell. He didn't have assistance. He didn't have the quadrants of Maryland all broken up. It was just him. And somebody would come in there and they'd wait for that right time where they did other things. And they say, Why is my board ranked second? Right? He beat this guy, he beat this guy, he beat this guy, he beat this guy. And he'd be fired up, right? Haswell would say, Well, he beat this guy 3 2, he beat that guy 42. He did but when he went to this event, when we had this event, he didn't participate. So that counts against him. You know, and you see the guy with his tail between his legs walking out the door. Yeah, he didn't want to lose. He didn't want to lose that. Oh, it, it, but Haz knew it. He had everything up here. He could have to tell you the numbers. He could tell you the people. He could tell you the places. He had it like clockwork. If we were at the walls and the tables, you know, somebody would say, oh, this guy beat this guy. Haz will look at, boom. He knew it. He knew who was it, who was there, every time. Like, like a database like right there all the time and it was unbelievable so it's having said that we've been a long way through a long thing i am so glad 
that we started this organization. I'm so glad that in the beginning of the days, you know, one of the things that Haswell said, hey, it's a small state. We've got the AAU, we've got the Federation, which is now USA Wrestling. We've got two things. We're not going to... We're not going to go one way or the other way. We're going to be above them and bring them together. It worked from the beginning. It works today. Some states are still fighting, you know, back and forth. Who's who's in control? This this um, plaque says innovative. Haswell came up with all kinds of ideas, all kinds. Remember, we did Greco first. We did um, freestyle second. That was a good idea. How about this all-star thing? What I mean. Some of you guys, all this all-star event, right? High school all-star. It's been you've been all your life. You've been there, right? We didn't have it before that. How beautiful is that? I mean, this is this is all his uh, his uh, thoughts and ideas and innovation. Okay. So for me, it's an honor to have Haswell as our chairman. For me, it's a it's a beauty to see what he's done with all this stuff. For me, it's an honor just to stand here and say thank you for all you've done. And um, I'm just glad to be part of it, to see it. Before you take the mic, one more thing. I've been around this state. We, we, we went to all these events together. Then I'll be wrestling in... Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Las Vegas, Toronto, whatever city I was in, he was there. I was in Las Vegas one time, and I went up to put my, my flyer in. There he is running the event at the national tour. I said, I don't know you do this, you know, why are you coming? Oh, we didn't have time, you know? But you need for no basis only, you know? So, I've been to two cities where I didn't see him. Italy and Tbilisi, Georgia. There's only two cities I wrestled in that you weren't there. I should have been. So there's all this room for improvement. Thank you. Thank you, Ron, for those words of wisdom. They bring back some fond memories. And then they bring back some other memories they like to forget. But you have to build on six failures with a success. I was very, very fortunate years ago to be taught a valuable lesson. That lesson is simply this. Find something in life that you really enjoy doing and you'll never have to work a day. I am the most blessed person I know. I have a wife that's put up with all of my bad habits for 55 years. She would knowing me here, but she's in a wheelchair, she's totally disabled, and we had another big banquet tonight that I was involved in, so she's there and I'm here. Secondly, I have the best job in the world. I'm chairman emeritus of my firm. Now what does that mean? That means I come into the office when I want to. <laughs> I leave when I want to. My four sons pay all the overhead and I simply split my business with them. My biggest expense in life is taking one or more sons out for lunch, and guess what? Dad's always buying. <laughs> but the same thing is true with my other interest in life, which has always been kids. I tell people, I'm a poor little Presbyterian boy being, who's being buried in a sea of Catholics. I have one Catholic wife. I have eight Catholic children and 21 Catholic grandchildren. <laughs> Matter of fact, when I got involved in athletics years ago, it wasn't just the rest of it. I was a baseball manager, commissioner for 17 years. I ran the football program, the girls softball, all these programs. And I adopted then a very helpful philosophy. If you can't beat them, I'll breed them. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm a little bit older, I've changed it. I'll tell you what my new theory is. If you can't beat them, outlive them! <laughs> now Ron gave you a little insight into the history of the MSWA, in particular, wrestling in general. But he did omit one person 
who was very, very helpful to us in the beginning. And this person, four-time NCAA wrestling champion, Navy's long-term coach, National Wrestling Hall of Fame, Ed Perry. And I would be very miss if I didn't tell each of you he paid a major part in getting us launched in the right direction. Now, you know, I've always liked wrestling because wrestling is like life. It's filled with challenges. But I learned years ago that challenges are opportunities. And if you would do your best to solve the problem that arise, you, your programs, your people, your friends will all be winners. Wrestling is the one sport that I know that gives all of us an opportunity to interact with people from different regions, from different religions, different socioeconomic backgrounds. And you know the thing I've found out all these years? Almost every single person is a very genuine, nice person inside. But you just got to get inside that onion ring. All of us have protection, but we have sensitive egos. But wrestling is the one way I know that you get a chance to have a positive effect on a large, large number of people. Now, through the years, we've had our share of controversies. Ron mentioned the battle between AAU and USA Wrestling. Well, the way I saw that one time was I required both cards for every tournament. Talk about a challenge for registration. I had to, we had to fill out an application for membership for both organizations. That lasted for about two years, and I almost killed me, so we stopped that. <laughs> the other thing you have to understand is, if you think the problems that we have today are significant, let me share with you 20 years ago. I think I was talking to Jay LeBat, who's the chairman of Maryland State Veterans Association. He's been moaning and groaning. I've been trying to get him to understand. People have to work together, and I think I'm making progress there. But I said, Jay, this is nothing. You should have seen our annual meeting about 20 years ago. We had another controversy. And back then, to vote, all you had to do was have a current USA wrestling card. And back then, we met at Mount St. Joe. That night, I'm not exaggerating, we had almost 100 human beings on election night arrive at Mount St. Joe, the two sides I was running as the chairman on both tickets, but I had people down below who have diabetically opposed to each other. The election was very, very close. As I recall, it was about a two-vote decision. What happened was, as soon as the election results were announced, the losers walked out completely. It took me two years to get them back into the organization. So again, and I, as a result of that, today I believe our organization is stronger. We have tremendous opportunities. I sent a letter to every major wrestling publication about two weeks ago because I am personally very disappointed in the amount of coverage that we are receiving for our wrestler, Mr. Kyle Snyder. I've been in wrestling for 50 years. He has the best record of any high school wrestler in any state in my 50 years of this sport. Think about that. Just completing his junior year, not only is he undefeated, a three-time state champion, a national prep champion for three years, a beast of the East champion for three years. He has been taken down in three years. Ready? One time. One time, the last great high school wrestler I remember, because I took my son, and we went down to Robinson High School down in Virginia. And that was a young man named Jimmy Carr. He was 15 years old and wrestled on our Olympic team. And I think Kyle Snyder is the best high school wrestler I have seen since Jimmy Carr. But I do want to say... I have to be a rude tonight because my wife, she's under care all the time. Uh, we have care people from 8 in the morning until 9.30 at night. And at 9.30 at night, the quality of my wife's care 
drops significantly because it becomes my responsibility. So when I leave here, I'm not trying to insult the other award winners because God knows they certainly have earned their special recognition. But I do want to thank the, the, the sponsors, Wayne especially, and Frank. I know how much time and effort they've put forth. And I hope this is the first of many, many other meetings where we bring the entire wrestling community together. Because in the long run, by doing that, all of us will end up being winners. Thank you. right now and it's all about the inner city it's all about creating opportunity to share the passion that we all love in our sport the director of Vita Streets is Lydell Henry I'm going to tell you a couple things that really stand out to me is he's created valuable opportunities for over 400 400 underprivileged kids you know that gives them that light that gives them that passion he's also done something that's pretty amazing. He's, he's established a program for the first hybrid academy focused on wrestling camps for underprivileged youth. The program places the emphasis on science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and I'm going to change one thing here, kicking butt, right? And kicking butt. But, so, when we have role models like this, an investment in youth is the investment will pay lifetime dividends. And he holds the key. Ladies and gentlemen, Lido, come on up. Lido, as uh, we're really proud, we, we talked to him, and one of the things that we're doing is you, you notice that we're giving awards for awards. And we called him up and we said, We'd like to honor our kid, your kid. I called him up, it was kind of late. And he started, he really, he started stuttering on the phone. He said, I said, no bugs, we're not. Who <laughs> really stands out? And uh, he made a wonderful choice. And I'd like to have Kerry McCoy, he's going to come up and assist in the presentation of his most deserving award to most deserving young man. Let's, let's get going. I don't know about stuttering. <laughs> Was a stuttering, but uh, when I'm public speaking, I, I have an anxiety to attack here and uh, you know start sweating profusely. So if you see me start sweating, you know that's why. So uh, I look at this flyer when I first came in. It says wrestling, keeping the dream alive. Everyone's seen this, right? And on this flyer, that's exactly what it is. It's a dream. And for beat the streets, it gives kids a dream. And I recall when I when I was wrestling, you know, I was a uh, at Rush Youth in Baltimore City, uh, went to Dunbar High School, and uh, I found wrestling. And uh, it's just exactly what I needed. You know, um, I, I had horrible grades. Um, I used to get in, in, in some trouble back in the day. And once I found wrestling, it just channeled my, in, my energies. You know, I would call, call up a lot of people in this room, Cornell Bastet, to take me across the country or not, you know, up and down the East Coast. To different wrestling tournaments. I used to call Hasbro Franklin up, debating why I'm not ranked ahead of different guys in the state. 
and uh, Carl uh, Ron Pilates. So that's what it just channeled my energies, where I just wanted to be on the mat at all times. And that's exactly what it, it was my dream, you know, the dream to be a state champion, a dream to, to go on to college. And that really sparked my, my interest in college, and that's how I ended up in college. I don't see myself as a role model, I'm just, it's basically doing what I love. And, and that's uh, influencing the youth. But this isn't about me, this is about the youth and how wrestling is gonna play a part in developing our youth and, and basically cut, um, catapult them into college. And uh, today we're here to represent Tyshawn Williams. Tyshawn Williams. Tyshawn Williams is, uh, he started wrestling at seven years old. You may have read the uh, brief bio. He started wrestling when he was seven years old and uh, at McKim's Wrestling. That's where we first met. And, uh, you know, I used to tease him. He would hardly lose, but when he did lose, I used to rub it in a lot, you know. And yeah, he used to get upset. I remember one time he we uh, lost to a kid, Ronnie Powell. And it, they wrestled like maybe like a hundred times. You ever had that one guy that you wrestled? And you beat him all the time. He finally beat you. And, you know, he just started crying. You know, crying, crying, crying. And I'm, I'm sitting there laughing. <laughs> it was funny to me. So I'm laughing at him. And the lady's like, Tasha, Scooby beat you. He called Scooby. Um, well, why you cry? He was like, uh, I wasn't crying because I lost. I was crying because I lost to Scooby. <laughs> So that was one of the funny stories, you know, that I remember Tyshawn, but you know, he's uh, come a long way. You know, he's uh, went down to Boys, Boys Town in Nebraska last year, won a state championships there, and you just see him start to develop. See him start to do better in school. And right now he's at a 3.0 GPA at Curly, and, you know, with a tough curriculum. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. And, and I guarantee you, it, and similarly with other kids, when they start wrestling, they take to the sport, you won't find them on street corners getting in trouble. You'll find them in a wrestling room. You'll find them trying to go someplace to wrestle. And that's basically in a nutshell what we're trying to accomplish is more or less on a holistic development approach. So congratulations, Tyshawn. You did a wonderful job this year. Keep up the great work. I'm the field director here, and I think you're don't break anything, you'll we'll have to pay for it later. Yeah, so the plaque says, uh, Titan Mercury Wrestling Club recognizing Tyshawn Williams for being awarded the Beat the Streets Baltimore Wrestler of the Year, Maryland, 2013. Aww. We have fun yet? Is this cool? Thank you. Moving right along, we have a 